Okay, let's get into some deep diving into how importing files works in IPFS. There are fewer people here, but I'm sure they'll shuffle in. All right, uh, let's get started. What actually happens when I use IPFS add? My file here is a tube of bits. <laughs> Uh, and what actually happens is that those bits get divided up into chunks. Chunk 1, chunk 2, and chunk 3. Uh, I'll be referring to them later, so just if you see C1, C2, C3, this, these are the bits of the file, the chunks of the file uh, that get chunked up. So these chunks are arranged into a tree structure, uh, which is a DAG, uh, and so we already talked about like items in the graph are called nodes. Not every node needs to contain a chunk of the file. Some of these nodes are intermediate nodes. They could contain chunks of files. They don't always. In this example, they don't. Uh, so, yeah, we've we've got uh, we've got the chunks in the these three chunks in the leaves of this uh, DAG that has been created. When building the graph, uh, we already talked a little bit about this, um, but we calculate a CID for every node, uh, and that happens from the bottom up. Uh, and that happens because we can't calculate the CID for the parent uh, until we know the CIDs for the children, because the CID is calculated from the data as well as any links it has. So if the links, if the, we don't have the CIDs for the links, we can't calculate the CID for the, the node. Uh, and so we, we have to start at the bottom here and, and come back up and at the top we can't do the top one because we don't have the one below it so we have to traverse all the way down to the to the leaf and then slowly make our way back up again uh, and we finally get to the root CID C QM hash 6 uh, and so for a single file this is the CID that is returned to you and you can think of this CID uh, as the CID for your file but actually it's the CID uh, of a node at the top of a tree, which makes up your file. Okay, so let's see it in action. You can try this out in your browsers as well. Uh, DAG.IPFS.io. All right, so here we go. You should end up, you should see something that looks like this. This is a tool that runs JSIPFS in your browser. If you drop a file onto it, it will um, draw the DAG that gets created. Um, so what we can do is we can drop a file on. Right, we can drop a file on. This is the readme from the Go IPFS uh, repo. Uh, and it will render my DAG for me. And I can hover over nodes. And I can see that on the bottom here, we've got a bar which tells us information about each node that's being created in the DAG. And, each, and we can see that each node has a different CID. And they're, they're put here. Um, they're displayed here, um, and then I can change. I can change things like the chunk size. I can, at the moment, we're we're creating five twelve byte chunks, but I can I can change that to one oh two four, and I get a graph with far fewer nodes because each chunk is able to have much more data in it. I can push that up to get an even smaller <coughs> graph, and go all the way. This is the default chunk size in IPFS. I just get a single node for this small file. There we go. Cool. So back back to the slides. All right. We've talked. We've already talked a little bit about this, but why why vary the chunk size? Um, so the default in IPFS at the moment is whenever you add a file, just to chunk it up in fixed chunk sizes. Um, we have a default for that, and we've just been changing that a little bit. Um, but like smaller chunks, uh, potentially, because they've got fewer bytes in them, it, we've got a better chance of deduping them. Um, but it, like, uh, like Michael's already said, uh, it's more work up front to create all of those chunks. You have to, you have to create hash, hash the data and uh, f for the CID for every single chunk. And the more chunks you have, that's more work up front. Uh, if we have larger chunk files, then that's less work up front, but uh, easier to, like, there's fewer nodes to traverse when you're transferring the data, fewer nodes to transfer. Um, and, uh, yeah, but uh, it's not so necessarily so great at deduping. Um, smart chunk sizes, on the other hand. Now, that's an interesting one. So, like, maybe you have a chunker that chunks at keyframes so you can have better seeking in videos. How cool would that be? 
or it might be a chunker that does like like very uh, like cleverly chunks the file so that um, so that if you add data in the middle, it doesn't throw off all of your. So the problem with like fixed chunk sizes is that if you add a bit of data in the middle, then everything like it throws off the rest of the chunks, and those so those chunks are now different. Uh, and so the deduping is not necessarily as, as good. If you use a smart chunker, which will uh, take that into account, maybe give you a chunk that's a little bit bigger for that data, then you can keep the same chunk, chunks that you had before for the rest of the file. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. So we have a smart chunker already. Uh, it's called Robin. Uh, you can use it in, uh, in JS in the browser. Um, which is brand new, by the way, it's sort of like a little wasm thing, uh, which is super cool. Um, and it's in it's in that DAG uh, that DAG visualizer as well, so you can check that out. Um, uh, so yeah, smart chunk size is really interesting, but again, it's more work up front to do that work of kind of figuring out where is the appropriate bound chunk boundaries. So that's always content specific. You have to know what type of data is. Well, so Robin doesn't know. Oh, okay. Uh, Robin just. Takes a stream of bytes and figures it out. It's very, it's it very clever. It <laughs> okay, it, it is crazy old R mm. okay. It's been around for a long time. It's not, it's not IPFS specific. Uh, okay, so back to the example. Let's look at deduping in the visualizer. All right, what I've got here is a. I've copied the README, and what I've done is I've just added some data to the end of it. So it's a little tiny bit bigger. And what I can do is I can drag and drop that on, on here. Uh, and what the visualizer tool does is it adds a, a directory for these two files. So these, these two nodes directly descending from uh, the directory are the two files that I've added, or the, the roots of the two files I've added, basically. Um, and you can see from the lines in this graph, they actually share almost all of the nodes. Apart from, so right at the end here, so we can pick these up and drag them. You can see that there's two little chunks here and here, which are the only two chunks that are not shared by uh, by these files, which is kind of cool. And you can see that this this chunk, uh, if you look at the um, oh, ow, the byte size here, um, it's this chunk has slightly more bytes than than this one. And what's happened here is that uh, we haven't I haven't managed to get it so that it, it like it's. It's on a complete boundary, so there will be some shared data in these two, in these two chunks. Uh, but one of them has that extra bit of data that I've added to the file. Uh, so yeah, this is this is deduping, and this is how the two two very similar files on disk can uh, it don't actually take up two times storage space in IPFS. Right. Okay, so actually, I've not told you the whole truth about this. The nodes in the graph are not just made up of the chunk of the file, the file data. <coughs> Every chunk is wrapped in this thing that we call the UnixFS wrapper. And UnixFS wrappers, uh, are, they can either be files, they can be directories, there are other types, but these, these two are the main, main two, and it allows, to, allows us to distinguish between what is file data and what is a directory. Uh, so it's kind of a dream within a dream. Uh, it's, not just the it's not just the data, it's the wrapper, and that, is, that is becomes the data. Uh, so what that does is it actually adds like a few bytes of overhead to every node because uh, we've got the UnixFS wrapper around each, each bit of data. So uh, let's take a quick look at that in, in here. Uh, okay, so we can see in the bottom left-hand corner, if you hover over a node, the, the UnixFS type that that node has, and this, uh, this one at the top, as I said, they, what, it, that what the tool does is it puts two files in a directory, so this is a UnixFS directory, uh, and these other nodes are all kind of UnixFS file uh, nodes. And so we can see <coughs> the total bytes that make up this node and the bytes of data in this node are slightly different. And that's because there is this UnixFS wrapper, there's, there's a few bytes of wrapping data uh, that, that is in every single node. What we can do is we can change, uh, we can change uh, the leaves to using raw leaves. 
And what that does is instead of adding the Unix FS uh, wrapper to the, to the leaves, it will not do that, and just, uh, it will just add a raw buffer of data as the leaf. And you can see that the bytes total for these nodes are exactly the same as the bytes of the data. So we don't have this wrapper anymore, and that means that we save a little bit of space on every node we create uh, because we don't, we're not wrapping it with, with any information. It also means that we get a V1 CID. So you can see here, this is, this is a V1 CID. So these ones are like, start with QM, that's a V0. These ones start with, well, BAF K in this, play, in this case. <coughs> why do they, why is the CID different? Confusing. So the CID is different because. I know where the hash is different, but why is it a different format? CID V0s, uh, as, we talked about earlier, they have implicit uh, things about them. One of those things that is implicit, that is not written, that means it's a V0 CID, is the IPLD format. And the IPLD format for these nodes is uh, DAG PB. For the raw nodes, because the IPLD format, if you remember, tells us how to decode the data. So we know that that what this data is, it's, it's a, it's a protobuf encoded chunk of data, uh, decode it um, with uh, using, like, you know, like as, it, as if it were a protobuf. Yeah, okay. So this, this is just raw bytes. And so this has the IPLD format, IPLD raw. Um, so, like I said, this is, now, this is now a V1 CID because it's using a a different format, and it, we, we literally, it cannot be a V0 CID because it's not a DAG PB um, encoded data. Uh, cool. So that's that. All right. There's also different graph layouts that have different performance characteristics. Balance layout is the default you get when you IPFS add. Um, it's <coughs> really simple to build. Um, and really easy to traverse, uh, but it's kind of difficult to edit. If you were to change it in the middle, you'd have to do a lot of rebalancing to, um, uh, to, to kind of balance it out again. Uh, whereas like we've got trickle as well is an option. It's more difficult to build, but um, it's really great for like streaming, for example, because the time to first byte is a lot less. Like you can imagine, like if I, if I have my data in this leaf, then to get to start <coughs> streaming, I need to get hold of this node, and then I need to get hold of this node, and I can start streaming. Whereas, like, imagine I've got a big file, like a big movie file, and it's made a big balanced DAG. And if I want to start streaming it, then I'm going to have to get this node, get this node, potentially this node, this node, this node, uh, before I can start streaming. So this time to first byte is going to be um, much better with a kind of trickle style DAG. Cool. All right, so let's take a look at the different the two different types of um, uh, of DAG layout that we have available. All right, so this is the balance layout, and this is what we've been looking at so far. But if we can use this uh, drop down here, and we can switch to a trickle DAG, and you can see that the layout has completely changed. This kind of it makes a really interesting structure uh, if you add like a bigger, bigger file on it. Um, oh. But one thing to notice is that this CID up here, if we check it out, it's a QM. It kind of ends with CWESU. If I if I change the to a balanced DAG, starts with QM, doesn't start doesn't end with the same same characters. Um, and this is the same data. Like if we've not changed the data, we've all we've done is change the options here. And actually, if you change any any of these options, then you'll get a different CID. So there's there's something to note there, uh, or take take heed of at least. Uh, you do get different CIDs if you change the different options, um, because the 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 um, the reason is that the it may have more or less children. And those children will have different will have different CIDs because they have more or less children. So it basically propagates all the way up to the top, um, and you just get a different CID for the same data. Now, 
if you've used the same chunking algorithm, then your leaves will probably still have the same same data that can be deduped. Uh, but it will just be the intermediate nodes that have different CI, um, different CIDs. Okay. Yeah, I was. You, you said that it was the same data, but technically all of the blocks include links, which I think you mentioned, which causes the hash to change, and that's the yeah. main reason. Yeah, because exactly that, the link structure. Is yeah, yeah. So the, yeah, uh, so I say it's the same data in that it's the same file data that was added to the DAG, but the intermediate nodes, um, okay. they are the thing. They are the things that are changed that are causing um, the, the 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 root CID to have changed. Yeah, you're right. So, but if I understood it correctly, the actual chunks will stay the same. So yeah. you still have a lot of deduping options. Yes, yeah. So yeah. you can imagine but, that. But it, not if you change the chunk size. Right, or the but chunk if you just change the DAG strategy. Yeah. So you can imagine a service that takes data that was added using a balanced DAG, restructuring it yep. for streaming purposes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be fairly cheap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. All right, cool.